everyone, this is Vikyong. Thank you for visiting my blog and as well to my YouTube channel. Right, Happy New Year to everyone as well. Um, this is my first video for the New Year. Yes, I've been late, um, but late is better than not doing anything. So, um, I've been trying to set up my home lab and I uh, decided to uh, do it once all over again. And so, today I'm just going to show you what the SQL scripts um, or the SQL queries that's provided inside the vCenter installation CD or ISO where you can use. There are, um, it's actually available in the installation guide as well but there were some differences in between so I'm just going to show you one of those that I use and I actually place it inside my blog. So do check back with my blog before I um, mean before or after watching the video. Okay so here to start I'm just going to install the SQL server here so I'll fast forward certain part of this video as the installation takes a bit of time and I'm limited by the 15 minutes restriction due to YouTube free videos. Right here I'm actually going to use SQL Server 2012. Of course you can use the SQL 20 it as well. Um, do check back on all the edition that is actually supported for vCenter 5.5. All right. Um, this can, uh, is uh, the link is actually available on my blog as well. So of course, as a best practice, we typically in the production environment we will install the SQL on a separate server. Here, I'm actually doing a home lab, so I'm going to install everything in just one box. Okay, I'm just going to do all most of the default um, and I'm not going to do any updates here to save some time. So in SQL 2012, uh, you are actually doing the installation download any new patches or updates that's available. So that's something new different uh, between SQL 2008 R2 and 2012. Right here, I'm just going to do the standard uh, installation of the SQL features. All right, and uh, here I'm just going to choose the database engine and as well as the management tool basic. So, these are the only two things I will be in actually installing. And um, as you can see, um, the path actually created uh, a separate um, D space for my vCenter. So I'm just going to add in that data disk back. Uh, okay. So here you see that I have another D drive here. So I'm going to put um, my features and uh, installations as per default. All right. And later on, my database and logs, I will put it into D drive. And um, just to note, uh, for SQL 2012, you actually require .NET 3.5 service pack 1. So as you can see that I actually went through all the uh, checks. Um, so most people, what they do, they have to cancel you don't have to do that just press back all you need to do is to just launch your server manager 
right under features all right just do the installation and um, once this is completed and you can just uh, click next and um, the SQL 2012 installations uh, will actually just do a quick check that .NET 3.5 is available and the installation will carry on from there so this saves you some time alright so my .NET has been completed I can close the server manager and I can go back to my SQL installation upon clicking next you actually do a quick check on .NET and you can see that everything will be green with passed all right and let's just proceed okay so i'm going to change the name uh, for my sql server Okay, here I'm just going to put everything as automatic to save my trouble. And I'm going to use a mix mode and uh, just configure my password. I'm going to add in the local admin into SQL admin as well. And database directory, you can see that all these are stored in C drive. and. Um, for that purpose, I'm just going to choose this all to my D drive where my data is going to be at. All right. Okay. So I've done that. I'm just going to click next. I'm just going to finish all this quickly. Okay, um, I'll come, I'll resume this video once this is completed. Okay, now you can see I have completed the installation. I'm just going to restart the server to carry on. So during this period, I actually copy in the SQL script, which I will share on my blog. Right. Right, so let me perform a restart and um, we'll come back after this. okay we are back to the windows um, so we need to create some scripts uh, actually documented in my, my blog and explain what are the script for so here you can see I actually created a database alright and I actually changed the path to where I want it in my D drive and the file size so just note SQL 2012 require at least 4 meg minimum for your database size alright the default script that was given was only 3 meg Alright, so you will encounter an error, so you just need to change that. And um, I actually added in another parameter, which is to alter the database to set recovery mode to simple. Of course, you can also set it to full. So this line is not added. Um, I added in specifically. Alright, so you can use that. And of course, uh, later on, you will add a user inside the database uh, called VPX user and assign it as um, uh, uh, and create a schema and set it as uh, and the default uh, schema database uh, for this VPX for this VPX user and after which um, the simple way out is actually to um, add the database owner role to VCDB and uh, MSDB so that uh, you can carry on with your vCenter installation however of course if you are not allowed to do so uh, to assign a DPO permission to uh, the, the user you can actually specify um, specific permissions uh, which is also documented inside my blog uh, after referring to all the scripts provided in the vCenter or from the installation doc alright so here I'm just going to use the first one um, right, all the way to creating the database I'm just going to paste it inside here and execute it alright so you will see that the database will be created Alright, so you can see here the database created 
and um, let's go clear this. And next we will uh, use the database, create an owner, and alter the schema. Right? Okay, so that is also been done, and uh, you'll be able to see that the VPX user is not created. And because the check policy is off, they ignore the password complexity requirement. So I'm just going to add uh, the final two rows, alright, which is assigning the DDO inside here. And that's done. So I'm just going to minimize this and um, you can see my both my database uh, log and files that you now created. And of course, uh, the most important thing before we start the installation of the vCenter is to create a system DSN. Alright, so we have to choose the native one and uh, set up this. Okay, you have to specify the host name, which I forgot to do that. Alright, so I'm not a regular SQL user, so sorry about that. Uh, successful. Okay, so when I did that, um, I'm actually creating a 64-bit DSN, right? So that's not an issue. So now I'm going to change um, my installation CD to vCenter. Here I'm just going to do a simple install. If you want to do it as separately, you can actually follow step by step. Right, because of my database has already been created, um, everything should be running very smoothly. Right, so I need to create a, enter a new password. This uh, vCenter 55, which is system call administrator inside this domain called vSphere local. So, my site name default for site, so I'm not going to do that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it as default for the time being. Okay, so vCenter has been completed. Okay, so thank you for watching. Alright, yeah, do leave your comments. So I hope the SQL scripts after tidying up and cleaning up, uh, it shall help you with the ease of installations. Alright, have a good day.